The directions say to find the general solution of the given higher order differential equation. Let's start off with example one. Suppose I'm given y triple prime minus 4y double prime minus 5y prime equals 0. So this is a third order differential equation, which means we need to have three linearly independent solutions to be able to produce our general solution. So you'll see what I mean shortly. So we're going to set y equal to e to the rx. y prime is r e to the rx. y double prime is r squared e to the rx. And y triple prime is r cubed e to the rx. So if I make my substitution, I get r cubed e to the rx minus 4r squared e to the rx minus 5r e to the rx equal to 0. And so... Remember that e to the rx is never 0. And so I have r cubed minus 4r squared minus 5r equals 0. Factor out the r, and I get r times the quantity r squared minus 4r minus 5 equals 0. Factoring further, I get r times r minus 5 times r plus 1 equals 0. Solving for r, I get r equals 0, r equals 5, or r equals negative 1. So here are my linearly independent solutions. We have y sub 1 equals e to the 0, which is equal to 1. y sub 2 equals e e to the 5x, and then y sub 3 is e to the negative 1x. So therefore, my general solution, y, is a plus be to the 5x plus ce to the negative 1x. And... That's how we do example one. Let's take a look at example two. Suppose we had y triple prime minus y equals zero. So just like in example one, we're going to set y equal to e to the rx. y prime is r e to the rx. y double prime is r squared e to the rx. And y triple prime is r cubed e to the rx. So if I make my substitution, I get r cubed e to the rx minus e to the rx equals 0. e to the rx is never 0. And so therefore, r cubed minus 1 equals 0. So if I factor, I get r minus 1 times r squared plus r plus 1 equals 0. So either r equals 1 or r squared plus r plus 1 is equal to 0. All right. Now, from here. We get r equals 1, and by the quadratic formula, we get r equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 1. So b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times 1. So going further, we get r equals 1 or r equals, now here we get negative 1 
plus or minus, I claim it's i times the square root of 3 divided by 2, which is equal to negative 1 half plus or minus i times the square root of 3 over 2. And just like in example 1, we need three linearly independent solutions. Okay? Now, here... Notice that alpha equals negative one half and beta is square root of three over two. So my three linearly independent solutions are y1 equals e to the x, y2 equals e to the negative one half x cosine of square root of three over two x, and then y3 is e to the negative one-half x times sine of square root of 3 over 2 times x. Now, I can write my general solution. So y is a e to the x plus... Now, if you don't mind... I'm going to factor out an e to the negative one-half x. And then I'm going to multiply by b cosine of square root of 3 over 2x plus c times sine of square root of 3 over 2 times x. And... That's how I express my general solution. Let's take a look at example three. Suppose I ask you the following. Suppose I had y triple prime uh, plus three y double prime minus four y prime minus 12 y equals zero. Okay. Now, from here, again, let y equal e to the rx. y prime is r e to the rx. y double prime is r squared e to the rx. And then y triple prime is r cubed e to the rx. Now, I'm going to make my substitution, and if you don't mind, I'm going to divide by e to the rx. And when I do, I get r cubed plus 3r squared minus 4r minus 12 equals 0. Now, we're going to factor by grouping. I'm going to look at the first two terms, and I'm going to take out an r squared. And when I do, I get r squared times r plus 3. And then look at the second two terms and take out a minus 4 and then multiply by r plus 3 and set that to 0. Now, I'm going to factor out an r plus 3 and multiply by r squared minus 4 and set this to 0. So, r is negative 3 or r squared is 4. So, r is negative 3, r is negative 2, or r is 2. Remember, third order differential equation, three linearly independent solutions. And so my general solution will look like y equals ae to the negative 3x plus be to the negative 2x plus ce to the 2x. And that's how we do example three. Let's take a look at example four. Now, in example four, I'm going to ask you the following. Suppose we had y triple prime plus three y double prime plus three y prime plus y equals 0. 
So again, I'm going to let y equal e to the rx. y prime is re to the rx. y double prime is r squared e to the rx. And y triple prime is r cubed e to the rx. I'm going to make my substitution and then divide through by e to the rx. And when I do, I get r cubed plus 3r squared plus 3r plus um, 1 is equal to 0. Okay. Okay. So r equals negative 1 is a solution of r cubed plus 3r squared plus 3r plus 1 equals 0. Okay? So which tells me that r plus 1 is a factor. Now, do we remember synthetic division where I make a negative 1 and I draw my little backwards L? And I'm going to put the coefficients of the of r cubed, r squared, r, and the constant all lined up. So in other words, I'm going to put a 1, a 3, a 3, and a 1. I'm going to draw a line, and I'm going to copy the 1 down. And then I'm going to multiply negative 1 times 1. And I'm going to get 1, 1 negative 1, of course, and I'm going to put that in this second column. And then when I add, I get 2. And then I'm going to take negative 1 times 2 and put that in the third column. So this is negative 2. I'm going to add to get 1. And then negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. I'm going to add to get 0. And so, therefore, r plus 1 times r squared plus 2r plus 1 is equal to 0. That's what that says. So I go from here, and then knowing that r equals negative 1 is a solution of this equation, that allowed me to factor the left-hand side. But if you notice, r squared plus 2r plus 1 is a perfect square. So I can write this as r plus 1 times r plus 1 squared equals 0. So r equals negative 1 three times. So when you have a repeated root, it looks something like this. My general solution will be y equals ae to the x plus bx e to the x plus cx squared, right? You just have to multiply by another x. So you get cx squared e to the x. And it looks something like this. Okay. Um, that was example four. Let's see if we can hit one more example for this video. And in this video, I'll do, uh, I can do a fourth order differential equation. And when you do a fourth order differential equation, you need four linearly independent solutions. So if I have the fourth derivative of y minus 2y double prime plus y equals 0, okay? So set y equal to e to the rx. y prime is re to the rx. y double prime is r squared e to the rx. y triple prime is r cubed e to the rx. And the fourth derivative of y is r to the fourth e to the rx. So when I make my substitution, I get r to the fourth minus 2r squared plus 1 equals 0. So r squared minus 1 squared is 0, if that makes sense. And so we get 
r plus 1 to the second times r minus 1 to the second equals 0. So remember, r squared minus 1 is r plus 1 times r minus 1, right? So r equals negative 1 twice. Remember, this is a fourth order differential equation, so you need four solutions. Or r equals 1 twice. And now we get to write our general solution. So y equals ae to the negative x plus bx e to the negative x. That took care of this part. And then we have ce to the x plus cx e to the x. And that took care of this part. And that's example five. And I think this is a good stopping point. Um, that'll do it for this video. It, and we solved uh, higher order differential equations. And we did five examples. Thank you.